my latte let the video begin hello besties it's maddie welcome back to my channel welcome back to another video and welcome to february it is officially my second favorite month out of the year the first one being october because of my birthday and also halloween is like my favorite holiday but sharing the first place spot with halloween is also valentine's day you heard me, Valentine's Day. If we're being quite honest, Halloween and Valentine's Day have the superior color schemes and you can't change my mind about this. Like there's just something about walking into grocery stores and just seeing pink and red vomit everywhere. I love it, okay? And I may just be saying that because I'm a Libra sun and a Libra Venus, but chef's kiss. I just love Valentine's Day. <laughs> But we gotta keep it real besties because I know not everyone loves Valentine's Day. I know a lot of people tend to get really bitter around Valentine's Day and just kind of hate on Valentine's Day. And let's be real, it is because it is a very highly commercialized holiday and the primary theme around Valentine's Day, it's kind of just turned into having a partner, having someone to go out with that night, having someone to buy you gifts and make you feel special. But no, 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 no. Yes, of course, having a romantic partner or someone you're intimate with to celebrate Valentine's Day with is always a great thing. That's always a plus. But let's not forget what the actual theme of Valentine's Day is. Love. Hey, I'm gonna tell you a secret. I'm gonna tell you a secret. You don't have to be in a relationship to love and celebrate Valentine's Day. I know, I know, I know, I know. It's so wild. And I know what you're probably thinking, Maddie, you literally have a partner, you have a boyfriend. Who are you to tell us that we can still be happy on this holiday and during this month without a partner? That is so true, bestie. In May, I will actually be celebrating three years with my partner, Richard, and I, oh, I'm gonna cry, I'm gonna cry. I love him so much. He is truly the f***ing light of my life. Guys, let me tell you something, let me tell you something. He's actually my first serious relationship that I've ever been in. We didn't start dating until I was 25. Before that, my last actual, like official relationship was in high school. And honestly, let's be real here. We don't really even need to count the high school relationships because none of us are actually in a good emotional headspace to be in an actual relationship in high school. So like, I almost don't even count my relationships in high school. That means from high school to after college, when I turned 25, that's how long I was single. That's how long I was celebrating Valentine's Day by myself. You can still celebrate Valentine's Day without being in a relationship. Because let's be real, okay, let me set the coffee down. Let's let's talk about love and the whole, the whole concept of love. Like, don't you have a best friend that you love? Don't you, or other friends that you love? Don't you have family members in your life that you love? Pets even? How about yourself? Do you love yourself? If your answer was no, or if you even had to hesitate and take some time to think about that because you really didn't know the answer, then grab a snack and sit down. It is time to implement something I am going to start calling self-love February because it's 2024. And if you are not loving yourself and you are not practicing self-love and self-care, what are you doing? It's 2024, it's time. And I don't even mean this in a harsh way towards anyone because guess what, you guys? I am talking to a camera and I'm talking to myself in the viewfinder. This all goes towards me as well because yes, I am in a very happy, committed relationship, but with myself, it's gotten a little rocky. All the advice that I'm going to be giving in this video, everything that I'm going to be talking about, please remember, I am not just telling it to you, but I'm telling it to myself too because my self-love journey has kind of lacked. My self-love journey has been very rocky throughout most of my life. And if I'm being quite honest, there were many years of my life that I just did not love myself. I, I couldn't answer honestly and tell you that I loved myself if you had asked because the answer was no. I just, I didn't love myself. I didn't like anything about myself. There was nothing about me that I really enjoyed. And if anything, there was more things about myself that I wanted to fix or change as opposed to just embracing and being proud of. I was actually inspired to make this video after a really intense journaling session last night because journaling is, is a self-love practice that I have been trying to implement back into my life. It's a habit that I did practice pretty frequently last year, but if I'm being honest, I really, really, really need to start journaling more this year because it just makes me feel so good. I find out so much about myself when I journal. And I just know that if I if I stick with it and I just keep journaling all year, it's go, I'm gonna blow my own mind. The subject I was journaling about was actually self-love because um, let's just say I was going through it yesterday. I was going through it because I got frustrated. Long story short, I got frustrated because I was having computer issues. My computer wouldn't connect to the internet. I was getting very heated and irritated and emotional. And I was on the phone with my boyfriend and I was getting really stressed and he kind of just called me on my shit. Kind of just let my emotions get a little too high. I got a little too emotional. I was feeling it a little too much. So I started journaling because if I'm feeling emotional, what I'm not 
not gonna do is turn to sweets and candy like I did when I was a kid. I'm gonna actually just write down what I'm feeling and let that marinate and see what is actually going on. And basically the entire journal entry turned into a conversation about self-love and that is why we're here. So what we're gonna be doing in this video is talking about three different things that we can do to love ourselves better and develop our self-love practices because let's be real, I don't really have a self-love practice. You know, I'm kind of wondering if I even needed to make a coffee this morning because if I'm being quite honest, I'm very energized still from the gym. I'm kind of already energized. I don't really know that I needed this, but I do have to work 12 to eight today. So this is just kind of gonna keep me going for the rest of the day. So let's talk about the three tools or strategies, whatever you wanna call them, that I'm going to be implementing in my life to encourage more self-love for myself and to just care about myself more. Let go of any emotional baggage. This is definitely the first strategy that you need to implement if you wanna embark on any kind of self-love journey. Old stories, old narratives, your negative self-talk, old trauma and stories from when you were younger that you're still carrying with yourself. And something that I found is I am still carrying quite a bit of emotional baggage from my childhood. So honestly, if you want to take a minute and pause the video and actually like journal on that, I highly recommend it because I find that once I start writing about my feelings, they kind of just all start going out. Like without even thinking, I just kind of start writing stuff. So I highly recommend journaling. Feel free to do that now. And honestly, it was kind of blowing my mind as I was writing it out, just how much I am still weighed down by a lot of things that happened to me as a child. So just to be real and honest and transparent with you guys, so like maybe it'll be a little more relatable. The biggest story or narrative that came up for me when I was journaling last night was my feelings of never being enough. And I know I'm not the only one that deals with this, so. Something that I kind of always knew was a problem, but I never really knew where it stemmed from. And of course, the more you journal, the more you go digging into the archives and you kind of find things that, oh, that explains it. And congratulations, that's called shadow work. I kind of realized that throughout my life and throughout my childhood, I always felt like I was never enough. Not for anyone in my family, not for my peers. I just always felt like I wasn't doing enough. I needed to be doing more. I needed to be doing better. I just always felt subpar. And that's really sad to think about as a kid. But the example that I actually thought of when I was journaling is I lived on a military base for fifth and sixth grade in Texas. My father used to be active duty in the military, so we moved quite frequently. And at this time we were living in Texas for a couple years and there was a local swimming pool on the army base. We would go there all the time and they offered swimming lessons for kids. So obviously my dad enrolled my sister and I because he wanted us to learn how to swim, right? You know, because you don't want your kid to fall in some water and drown. So we would do these swimming lessons and at this pool, there were two slides. One that was really fun and it's like the curly Q one that kind of goes down like this and then shoots you off into the water. And to be able to ride that slide, you had to take swimming lessons and show a certain amount of skill to receive, I think it was like a yellow armband. They would give you like a yellow wristband and you would show that to the guy, the lifeguard, so that he knew you could ride the slide without, you know, like drowning when you get to the bottom. Like, I don't know. It was just kind of like, hey, I can swim. I'm allowed to go on this. That was the first slide. And then next to it was the big slide. And I know you probably already know which one I'm talking about. It's the, the really tall one that like just goes straight down and like literally gives you like, like mega wedgie. I, I have never ridden one of those slides to this day because they terrify me and I have no desire to. I was taking these swimming lessons and I passed high enough to get the yellow wristband to ride the curly Q slide that I wanted to ride. I was like, okay, cool. I can ride the slide now. Unfortunately, that was not enough for my father. He wanted me to get the white wristband. He wanted me to have the white wristband because it was the highest tier one. It was the best one. And it meant you were just like a pro at swimming. I, I don't really know. I'm not entirely sure. In my head, I, di I didn't want that because I was like, I don't even care about riding this big slide because it scares me and I'm a child and I don't want to ride it. So like, why do I need this wristband? But essentially he was going to force me to go back to swimming lessons and keep doing the swimming lessons and the swimming tests until I could get that higher wristband. And, and I remember this one point after swimming lessons, I was crying because I didn't want to do it anymore. I didn't understand why I had to keep working towards that wristband when I didn't even want it. He essentially scolded me and asked me like, you know, why are you crying? And just kind of made me feel bad for, you know, crying and being upset over the fact that I didn't want to do this anymore. I, it was something that I didn't want, but I was being made to feel like one, I wasn't good enough at swimming, so I had to keep going. And two, this was like the only way he was going to be happy. Like this was the only way I was going to make my father happy by pushing myself to keep swimming and get a higher wristband so that I could ride a slide that I didn't care about. It wasn't for me at all. It was for him. And you know, that used to be such a small, obscure memory that I would not have even thought about for the longest time, but 
lo and behold, 20 years later, okay, I wasn't five, how, like, I was probably like 10, like 15 years later, now I overwork myself constantly. I constantly set high standards for myself and I'm constantly feeling like I have to push myself more and do more and be more for the other people in my life because as a child, I never felt like I was enough. Oh my God. <laughs> Is this video just gonna turn into me talking about my childhood trauma? That's just one example of how something so seemingly small and insignificant in my childhood manifested into such a greater problem. And the reason it all kind of connects is because last night when I was getting really emotional and upset about the fact that I couldn't use my computer, it wasn't connecting to the internet, I couldn't connect to my Adobe servers, I use Premiere Pro to edit my videos. I just really wanted to edit this video. I'm actually ahead of my editing schedule right now. I had like two weeks of content already scheduled out. I was in a really good place. I was really excited because I got this really good momentum going. Not being able to get online and be able to access Premiere Pro so I could keep editing my videos was really frustrating me. And it was making me feel like, okay, well now I can't work. I can't be productive. I can't do things. Woe is me, the night is ruined essentially. Through that journaling last night, I kind of realized I really do be working myself a lot. I really do be working myself a lot. But just to sum all that up, if you wanna take a few minutes to journal about this, the question that I gave myself in my journal and the question that I'm going to give you is what emotional baggage are you carrying that you need to let go of in order to continue on your self-love journey? Because let's be real, there there is always at least one thing holding us back from our self-love. Like it's always, I, I'll, I'll practice my self-love and I'll love myself more, but only when I do this. Self-love isn't conditional. Self-love isn't about, you know, I, I I'll love myself, but only when I can deadlift a certain amount of weight or only when I lose this weight and I have a bikini body by summer. I'll love myself more, but only once I've, you know, gotten a master's degree or I've, you know, pursued this career and I'm excelling in it. Like, no. <laughs> Something else that I really realized in the last couple days as well, as far as like self-love goes, is my self-love has been very conditional and it, it can't be. You have to love and accept yourself for who you are right now in this present moment, whatever you're doing right now, whatever you're thinking, whatever you're feeling right now, you have to love and accept who you are right now in this moment in time. Otherwise, it won't even matter how much weight you lose. It won't matter how much weight you can deadlift. It won't matter what you study or what kind of job you get. You will always feel like you're never enough. You will always feel like you need to be doing more. You will always be pushing yourself towards a finish line that just keeps moving further and further away. Boy, I just gave myself the chills. And I am not meaning this in a harsh way. I am honestly telling myself this right now in the viewfinder because this is something that I have been needing to hear for quite frankly, my entire life. <laughs> the more and more I thought about all of these things, the more and more I realized that all of my self-love has always been conditional. And you might be asking yourself, Maddie, how am I supposed to do that? How am I supposed to let go of my baggage? Well, that's a great question because it's gonna lead into our second strategy, which is making your self-care a priority. Let's let, like y'all, let's be real. I, I don't really have the best self-love practices. Like part of the reason I'm making this entire video is because I. I, I am trying to be so serious and committed to my self-love journey that I'm putting it on the internet essentially. Like, yes, I'm providing all of this as advice for you guys because I know I'm not the only one who struggles with this, but I'm also doing it because if I put it out on the internet, then I've officially committed to it and I have to do it because if I come back a few months later and I say that I'm still like struggling and I haven't really done anything with this, it's gonna be like, <laughs> what are you doing? And again, there's no better time like February because again, Valentine's Day is about love. And you know what? If you don't love yourself, I'm not gonna say that, you know, if you can't love yourself then how are you gonna love anyone else because I, I'm gonna be so for real I was not in a good mental space when I started dating my boyfriend I had a lot of negative self-talk about myself like I, I was not in a good place I truly think that even if you can't love yourself love from the right people can encourage you to love yourself more one thing you can do to help grow your self-love is think about the people you surround yourself with I think what we don't realize is how much the people we surround ourselves with really affect us and honestly that is why my friend circle has gotten so so small over the years. Like I really only have like a few people I talk to daily. Two of them are my boyfriend and my sister. I have kind of, I just kind of let go of the concept of like wanting to have like a really big friend group right now. And honestly, it's because I had to let go of a lot of friends last year. At the beginning of 2023, I did let go of about three or four friends of mine. And that was really because mentally and emotionally they were starting to take a toll on me. And one of them in particular was very self-serving and put herself before a lot of people. And I can't, I can't function in a relationship like that. I can't function in a relationship with someone who wants to take everything that I have but won't give anything back. Like there's gotta be, it, it, it's gotta be an even exchange and it just wasn't there. So long story short, I did try to talk about this with her and it kind of just didn't work out. 
it just didn't work out. And I just kind of had to make peace with the fact that, okay, these people are not meant to be in my life. Some people are only in your life for a season. I hear that all the time. Some people are not meant to make it to the next season of your life. Some people are and some people aren't. And it was really just a moment where I realized, you know, did I love these people? Yes. You know, I have so many memories with them, but at the end of the day, keeping them in my life is hindering me more than it is helping me. And I'm saying all of this because, again, you don't really realize how much the people in your life are affecting you until you start cutting them out. When you start really vetting the people who don't show up for you, who don't have your best interests at heart, who would rather sabotage you and see you fail because they're so insecure that they can't stand to see you grow. Thankfully, I haven't really had anybody like that in my life. At least I hope not. If so, I will find you and we're gonna deal with that. I am, I am actually gonna be so, so for real with you guys. I truly think that moment, because this happened in like January or February, this happened at the very beginning of last year. I truly think that that moment that I decided that, that I said, I'm done, I'm not, I'm not gonna continue into another year of my life with people who don't care about me, who don't truly have my best interests in mind. Like, I'm just not gonna do it anymore. And I truly believe that that moment is what set the course for how the rest of last year went and for where I'm at now. Something else when it comes to cutting people out of your life who are hindering you, it's it's not just about like, you know, are there people in your life who are mean to you and outright trying to sabotage you? But do you have people in your life that maybe encourage you to take part in bad habits? Do you have friends that literally just wanna go out every single weekend and drink and party and spend all their money? Do you have friends that maybe always encourage you to like, you know, go out to eat or, you know, when you hang out together, you, you make really bad choices involving food when you know you wanna be better with your relationship with food? Do you have people like that in your life that affect you negatively. And uh, that was something else I had to deal with a lot last year. I had to really set my boundaries with different people in my life. There are people in my life that while I love them dearly, I cannot let myself hang out around them as much as I would like to anymore just because I know that when I'm with that person, I'm going to make bad decisions. Like I'm going to take part in bad habits that I know are gonna make me feel like shit the next morning. If you've got people like that in your life, I'm not saying you have to literally cut everyone out of your life. I, I haven't cut all of these people out of my life. There are still people that I love and I love hanging out with. I just can't do it as frequently. And part of self-love is having that boundary with yourself. Tell yourself, you know, like, okay, I don't want to cut this person out of my life, but, you know, maybe when they message me every single week, and like, I don't have anybody like this, but like, you know, if you have someone messaging you every single week, like saying, you know, they want to go out and they want to go party, there's no shame in just saying no. Please, please let go of the FOMO. You're not missing out. Honestly, something I'm going to start implementing this year too, I heard it in Lena Lift's video. She said, JOMO, joy of missing out. I'm going to be joyful about missing out on things. I'm going to be joyful about not going to the bar tonight and spending $50 on drinks. I'm going to be joyful about not going out to dinner every other night and spending money on food when I could literally just cook something in my kitchen. Like I'm going to be joyful this year about missing out on things. Saying no to some of these things is literally just respecting the boundaries that I've set with myself. That in itself is prioritizing your self-love and your self-care. Saying no to things because you know at the end of the day it'll make you feel better and it's going to push you closer to your goal. Like that's self-love. This is the thing. Everyone loves to say like, ooh, self-care time. I'm going to go take a bath or ooh, self-love. I'm going to go do a face mask because that's self-love. And, and that's, that is, that is self-love, okay? Taking care of your hygiene and taking care of your skin, all of those things are self-love. But I feel like people focus too much on those cute aesthetic self-love kind of things and it keeps us from getting under our skin and looking at the real issues, the real issues that are causing our problems with not being able to develop any real kind of self-love for ourselves. Self-love isn't just like taking a bubble bath and doing a face mask, it's being disciplined with yourself and not letting yourself engage in habits and behaviors that you know are gonna affect yourself negatively and set you back. Self-love and self-care is gonna look different for everyone, but you know, you'll know. And this is why I say journal, because honestly, this kind of stuff is stuff that comes up when I journal and I start to figure out what exactly it is that I need to be doing more. Another self-care tactic that I really like to do is positive affirmations and just talking to yourself, talking yourself down. So that's something that I do quite frequently when I notice that I'm getting really heated or if I'm getting really emotional. Instead of staying in that situation and staying in that headspace that's affecting you, know when to leave, know when to take yourself out. If you are physically somewhere that is affecting you mentally, exercise your right to leave. Exercise your right to take yourself out of that environment that is affecting you and leave. And if you can't, try to remember in that moment to just talk, like just talk to yourself. Like I literally, oh my God, you guys, I talk to myself all the time. I don't really have too many other tips for this section because again, my self-love journey is very much still ongoing. I have yet to really figure out what my best practices are for self-love. But that also leads into our third strategy, which is rebuilding and restructuring the narrative you have about yourself in your life. 
Sometimes Dululu is the Salulu. And this is something that I've kind of implemented in the last year to kind of keep my blinders on and keep me focused on my goal without really thinking too much about outside opinions or anything else. Fake it till you make it is fine, in my opinion, because that is what I was kind of doing in college. However, the way you need to fake it till you make it is you actually have to make it. The, the issue that I have with fake it till you make it, because this is what I did when I was in college, is I told myself that I had confidence and that I didn't have any insecurities or body image. And I just outwardly to other people expressed that confidence. Like I was just happy with myself and I had no issues with myself. But when I got home, I was very much insecure. I very much did not like my body. I very much hated myself. I think the problem with fake it till you make it is a lot of people use that to just kind of gloss over the problem. Like they're just gonna pretend that they're confident and act like one day they're just gonna wake up and actually be confident without doing any of the actual work and self growth to actually gain that confidence. Like you're not doing anything to actually instill that confidence. So like, of course you can't just keep faking it forever. And you know what? This is something else that I'm trying to work on this year because I didn't have a lot of self-confidence for a while. And I am trying to just work on being more confident and being confident in the things that I'm saying and knowing that I as a person have value. And I know that what I can provide to this world can help other people instead of standing like a flamingo in my room. Apparently I'm literally standing on one leg. Something I started implementing last year is telling yourself a different narrative, telling yourself a different story. And I know a lot of people talk about this all the time on YouTube these days, but it actually really does work, you guys. Especially when I started getting back on YouTube last year and I decided that, you know, this was going to be the big thing that I want to work on. This is what I want my life to be. I had to start telling myself a different narrative because it did get really frustrating and really discouraging. Try and film and edit and upload every week, but then like turn around and have to go to work like 30 to 40 hours a week and feel like, you know, I'm giving all of my time to something that I don't want to do. It's just something I have to do because I, I can't pay my bills on YouTube yet. So something that I had to do a lot last year, especially when I was working at Target and then at Sam's Club, because those were very much um, garbage retail environments that I did not like to work in. I was not happy at either of those jobs. And something that I started doing, which I'm very proud of myself because I still do this quite a bit, tell yourself a different story. Change the narrative in your head. Instead of saying, well, I can't do this new hobby or I can't start this new venture because I have this full-time job taking up all my time and I'm never gonna be able to do this because I'm giving all my time to this job and I'm gonna be stuck here forever. Instead of focusing on that, focus on what you're actually trying to achieve. I don't sit here and tell myself, I have a million followers on YouTube and I make so much money from YouTube. Like I don't I do not do that. That's not how I like manifest anything because it's that's a little just too delusional and like too far off. But when I was working at Sam's Club last year, instead of ruminating on the fact that I have to work at Sam's Club, I just say, this is only temporary. This is not my reality. This situation is only temporary. It is not my reality. And that's like literally, sometimes that's literally all I would tell myself. I would repeat that to myself all day while I was at work. I was like, this is temporary. This is not my reality. This is merely a temporary situation. So if you're like me and like, you know, like trying to like write out like, I have a million YouTube subscribers and like, that's just not realistic for you because it's not realistic for me. Instead, I tell myself my YouTube channel is always growing and expanding and reaching new people. And the followers that I will have are on their way to me. It's not delusional. It's not delusional because guess what? My watch time is going up. I've gotten more subscribers in the last few months. I'm seeing more engagement and comments from you guys on my videos. Thank you so much, by the way. If you comment on my videos, thank you so much. I love talking to people in my comments and I love so much that I am getting more comments on my videos. So while I would love to see it grow even more, that right there is proof. What I was manifesting last year is on its way to me and it is finding me. And when it comes to moments like the ones that I have in my head, where sometimes I catch myself with negative self-talk and telling myself a negative story. And like, I wish there was an easier way to do this, but it is really about just being vigilant and really observing yourself when you catch yourself in those moments. It's really about staying on top of yourself for that. Like when you catch yourself being negative and engaging in negative self-talk with yourself. You really have to just be good about catching yourself in that moment and saying like, no, stop. We're not thinking like that anymore. That's not our narrative. That's not our story. You're not living in a reality of self-hatred where we don't feel good enough. We are doing everything we can with the tools that we have right now. And that's what I tell myself a lot of times too, especially when I get really overwhelmed with like, you know, trying to balance YouTube and my full-time job. A lot of times what I have to tell myself and what I had to tell myself last night when I couldn't edit, I am doing the best with the situation and the tools that I have right now. No one is here in my room judging how quick I can get a YouTube video edited and uploaded. No one is here to judge how much work I'm doing and whether or not I'm doing enough. No one is expecting me to get a month's worth of videos edited and uploaded in like a week. And it's unfair and unrealistic of me to expect that of myself. Really unfair and unrealistic of ourselves to set these high standards that quite literally nobody is holding on us. 
but ourselves. Honestly, if this is something you need to journal, I highly recommend it because sometimes it is very hard for me to say it to myself, but for the first time last night, I actually did write out and truly start to acknowledge and accept that I am enough. I have always been enough. I always will be. It doesn't matter what my family thought of me as a kid. It doesn't matter if anybody in my childhood or in my younger years thought that I wasn't doing enough. That's not the reality right now. The reality right now is that I am doing the best that I can with the tools that I have. I am giving my heart and my all to the things that I'm passionate about and that in itself is enough. Okay, hi besties. I have returned. Oh my God, there's something in my eye. Why is there always something in my eye when I vlog? I have returned, but you you didn't know that I ever left. It kind of got to where I feel like I was just talking too much that I was just kind of rambling. I also had to go to work that morning. So I was kind of like, I need to wrap this up. So it's been a few days because I have been working and I want to take a break from the chit chat actually, because it is time to decorate. I literally have my box of Valentine's decorations out in the living room and it's just been sitting there unopened. Why you may ask? I could not even tell you. I think I just really wanted my boyfriend to help me decorate. I think I also just felt like I needed to have someone there with me to enjoy the experience. And that's just not what we're about this year, besties. One of my goals this year, one of my little self-improvement goals here, which I feel like could kind of fall into self-love and self-care is learning to do things alone. It's not that I'm incapable of doing things alone. It's just, I feel like having a partner and having someone always there to talk to and lean on while well, while it's a great thing don't get me wrong it is literally the best thing i feel like i have really become reliant on another person's presence around me and it's not that i don't like doing things alone or that i can't it's just i've kind of fallen out of practice with doing things alone and just enjoying my own company and i feel like that in itself is very integral to self-care because if you don't like who you are when you're by yourself Bestie, we gotta work on that. We are, me and you, yes, me and you. You and me watching this. We're gonna have a little moment, okay? So let's decorate. God, I also have these little placemats. Okay, um, I have another garland, excuse me. Thank you. 